Hello, everyone. Hey, we're ready for another CCO Club webinar. We're at 113. Just seems like yesterday when we started with number one. If you are not already a member of our CCO Club, it's really easy to join. It's cco.us forward slash club. It's where we answer members' questions and kind of unpack the details going behind the scenes. You know what? We have a fun one tonight. We're going to talk about cardiology, cardiology procedures and what you need to know. And we're actually not going to look at any codes tonight. We're going to talk about the information and what knowledge you need to be able to code an abstract at the highest specificity. So we're going to talk about a little bit about the disease process because procedures that are done uh, for cardiology are based on the anatomy and the disease process. And we need to know the information at the highest specificity. I'm also going to give you some highlights about the procedures and things you need to know within each procedure to highlight it. Now we've done presentations in the past. There are, you'll find them in the club and you'll find also on our, our YouTube channel uh, more specific in some of these areas. And so uh, pacemakers, for example, uh, pretty in depth. I could do a whole lecture on just coding pacemakers alone. But the important thing to know is how do, what do we need to know to be able to code for those procedures? Let's first look at why it's important to have a robust knowledge of cardiology procedures. The first thing is straight from the CDC that heart disease is extremely common in the uh, globally, but in the United States, it's still the leading cause of death. Um, and it, uh, it does not uh, care about ethnicity at all. Heart disease is heart disease. There are some diagnoses and diseases that can be pr more predominant in, in a particular ethnicity than another one, but heart disease across the board, it is, uh, it doesn't care. And also, uh, I thought this statistic was pretty alarming that one person dies every 34 seconds in the U.S., for, uh, from cardiovascular disease. Now that doesn't mean that they're having an MI or a heart attack every 34 seconds. We're talking that is the cause of their death, a cardiovascular disease. And we're going to talk about several of those and the procedures that are done for specific cardiovascular disease. It also went in to say that uh, even back in 2020, that or uh, almost 700,000 people in the U.S. died of heart disease, and that's one in every five deaths. Again, heart disease. Um, heart disease costs a lot of money, and uh, they uh, they estimated almost 230 billion dollars each year, and they took that statistic from 2017 to 2018. And that is going to include the the healthcare cost, the services for healthcare, the medications that are involved. And we're going to talk a little bit about those. And you're going to see that that plays a role in all of the treatments, as well as loss of productivity due to health. When you have heart disease, you're not able to uh, work like a person that doesn't have heart disease. Now you can still work. There's several things that um, heart, different types of disease that you may even not, not even know you have until it uh, becomes problematic for you. But the takeaway here is that once um, heart disease takes root, um, you're very limited to what you can do. Again, this is all taken from the CDC website, and I have linked at our resource slide at the end where I got um, these statistics as well as the other information from uh, for the slide deck for you so you can go back and reference it. Well, if we talk about cardiology procedures, the first thing uh, to know is that it's not all about the heart itself. 
right? So when you think about cardiology, that's usually the starting point. Everybody thinks about, oh, well, that's something wrong with the heart. Well, yes, it can be, but cardiology is actually going to cover um, the anatomy of the heart, as well as all of the other vessels that bring the blood flow in and out of the heart. So those vessels uh, will be divided up into great and lesser vessels, but they will involve arteries, veins, arterioles, and capillaries. And the disease process, the different cardiology and cardiovascular diseases will be based on um, where they're located in the anatomy, as well uh, as the procedures will be focused on uh, the location of the disease in the cardiovascular system. So I would encourage you to, first of all, you need to know the inside, literally the inside and outside of the heart. And a great way to do that is, again, if you have a textbook, usually has that any textbook will will do that, that involves anatomy. Uh, but this great graphic, you can find these models online. Now, I'm not saying you need to go purchase one of those. They can be expensive, but I mean that they have them on, on the uh, websites where you can literally take them apart uh, online and uh, uh, get to know the anatomy. And some of them are very realistic. Uh, so uh, take advantage of those resources out there. It'd be kind of fun uh, to do that. There is even things like Quizlet and uh, the ability, places where you can make flashcards. Uh, tap into um, nursing. Um, outlets and education for uh, different health fields. And you'd be surprised the uh, um, education that you get that's free out there to help you learn anatomy as well as physiology. And of course, we've broken the heart apart several times and done uh, videos uh, on that. In fact, if there is a particular organ system that you'd like us to unpack for you, let me know. Um, so with the procedures, again, first, we need to know the anatomy of not just the heart itself, inside and out, but the vascular system and the arterial system uh, as well. And then we need to know how the heart works. And it's important to know the heart has three uh, major components to it, or this is the way I like to to when I'm teaching and talking about the heart is to say, you can't forget that the heart is a muscle. That is usually what everybody remembers. We know it's a muscle, but it also is electrical and chemical. The, there is um, a part of the heart runs uh, uh, on chemicals and uh, it, for example, calcium and magnesium, uh, if those are not in balance in the body, then um, the heart can trip into arrhythmias and have other complications. And the heart is electrical. There's an SA in the VA node in the bundle of his, and it is um, uh, the information that comes down from the brain that literally sparks and keeps the heart pumping in a specific rhythm uh, that runs the entire cardiovascular system. And then we can even go in to talk about uh, the anatomy differences between the uh, veins and the arteries. I've talked about those several times too. You may have picked it up on other videos. So just remember that if the heart is going to work properly, there's a muscle component, a chemical component, an electrical component. And all of the procedures that are done to the cardiovascular system are based on, are we treating the muscle? Are we treating a chemical imbalance? Or are we treating an electrical imbalance? Very important for you to remember that. Now let's take some common diseases and diagnoses and pair them up with treatments or procedures that are done. You'll notice <laughs> that first of all, every single one of these, and this is just a highlight of a few that are very common, uh, 
every one of them it starts with medication. If we can be less invasive and treat the disease with medication, then that's great. Um, also, you'll notice, uh, for example, hypertension, weight loss and lifestyle modifications and changes that can do a lot to um, assist the heart uh, uh, to function at its peak. Let's start with the diagnoses of, uh, let's start at the top, at arrhythmias. The arrhythmia would be the electrical uh, component of the heart. If the heart is not working at its peak capacity because its rhythm is out of, um, out of its normal uh, function and range, we can use medication to treat that. And we also have the option of pacemakers and defibrillators to keep the arrhythmia in pace, literally in pace. Now, what you need to know about pacemakers and defibrillators is that you can, they can place a pacemaker and they can place a defibrillator and to a little pocket that they create, but they also can combine that and it'll be a pacer and a defibrillator together. Each one of those will have leads and you can have multiple leads. And when you are dealing with the procedures and coding those procedures, the first step is they're going to make a pocket to put the, the pacer or the defibrillator, let's say the device in. So that's the first step. And then they're going to place uh, leads into the heart and we're going to either run them in and we're going to tap into the SA or the VA nodes areas. You can go look at videos on how they've done this and we've done videos as well for education and then they'll plug that into the device itself and they will monitor that device. So that's another procedure that's done is them coming in and monitoring. If one of the leads goes bad, they can replace the lead. If the pacer itself or the defibrillator goes bad, they can replace it. They used to have uh, even like a battery that they had to replace, I think, back in the day, but they don't do that anymore. And the lifespan of these devices is really significant. So again, you need to know that about the procedures. A blockage or an MI. When we start getting clogged vessels in the cardiovascular, arterial vascular system, doesn't matter where the blockage is, it's going to cause problems with the flow of um, blood it, uh, in and out of the heart. If we have a blockage within the heart itself, we will uh, eventually have death of tissue. And so how do we treat that? Medication, of course. We can go in and do an angioplasty where we uh, run ves uh, 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 a catheter in and blow it up and kind of do a balloon process. We can do an atherectomy where they go in and kind of roto-rooter out the vessel. And we can do bypasses where the vessel is completely blocked and so we either take another vessel uh, at the heart and um, reattach it to substitute blood flow from another uh, vessel. Now, with those treatments, the takeaways and what you need to know is uh, for angioplasty, where is it being done at? Where's the start? You know, where are we poking you? Where are we going in at? And where do we end up? Atherectomy, same thing. Where do you go in at? And what vessels are you cleaning out? And if there's any stents left in and bypass, uh, 